Hi guys and welcome to Yokdo Gaming Plays Football Manager 2022. We are finally, finally, finally back. It's been a bit staggered the last few weeks because I've had issues with my second monitor and my setup in general. And if I'm perfectly honest, I haven't really been that forceful with myself to try and get my issues sorted out. But I finally have my setup how I want it and we can finally get back to going through this playthrough. A lot's happened in the last few videos and what I intend on doing in this video is just sort of summarizing almost from the very beginning of where I started, where I went and where I'm at. Those of you who have followed me on YouTube or have even just seen the last two or three videos would have known that we left Dulwich Hamlet to manage Hanover 96 and to be honest I actually got pretty bored managing Hanover in the Bundesliga and they decided to leave for Stoke anyway but I'll go through it in a bit more detail in just a second. Right now I just want to sort of rewind the tape and take you guys all the way back to the beginning where the road to greatness originally started and the aim of this road to greatness playthrough is to win the Champions League. So without further ado we started off at Dulwich Hamlet in the Vanderama National League South and initially we did okay finished third and then second, managed to get promoted that second season. In our first couple of seasons in the National League we struggled, I think it's fair to say finishing 20th and 18th and in the third season I really, I'm, I was a bit annoyed with myself because I really thought we should have got promoted. I distinctly remember that third season being the season that we had everything in the bag and then we sort of just threw it away. Finally got promoted from the National League in the fourth season to League Two and surprisingly we did better than expected. I finished sixth in the first season and midway through the second season I at that point was 13th and I just felt like I needed to change. It was tough grinding it out. I had no money at Dulwich. It was my what would that have been? Three, four, five, six. It would have been my eighth season. And it was quite a struggle and the Hanover 96 job was avail available in Germany and they originally were in the relegation zone. With that I managed to pull them out of relegation zone and finish 10 and then in the following season we did the unthinkable. I'm not going to lie it was a bit of a surprise to me. I finished third and via the playoffs managed to get promoted to the German top tier Bundesliga. Now <laughs> Midway through that, I just felt like, I think maybe because I wasn't associating with players and teams that I know, I just got bored. And if I'm being truthfully honest, I thought I wanted to get back managing in England. And weirdly enough, Stoke City had a vacant managerial position in the Championship. Now, the real weird thing with this was that Stoke were actually first in the league without a manager so I'm wondering if I can just show you would it be milestones yeah so as you can see here I resigned first second week of Jan and then a couple of months later I had to stop job in March and then within two months got promoted and believe me when I say this I did nothing <laughs> the team was there for me uh, and he got promoted right away so that's where we are well I say that's where we are we're currently in the Premier League uh, I'm going to go through that in a bit more detail. So we managed to get promoted and I managed to sort of rejig the squad, sort my tactics out and that takes us to present day or present in-game day of the 11th of April 2020, 2032 sorry, even. So with regards to my squad, what I'm going to do is run through the squad, have a look at the table, have a look at where we can finish and just give you a general overview. So, for those of you who don't know too much about Stoke City, they're a football club founded in 1863. They are sort of the north, situated in the northwest uh, of England, south of Manchester, I'd say, probably is the biggest city, or the nearest city, I should say, to Stoke, with the nickname of the Potters. Uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about this? The local... Uh, Derbies include Port Vale and Crew, and the Potteries Derby in, oh, also includes Port Vale. 
Uh, we've also got rivals, we are also rivals with West Brom and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Legends, we have quite a few that you might have heard of. Gordon Banks, the famous England goalkeeper. Stanley Matthews, another one that those of you who follow or know about football would probably be familiar with. Uh, with regards to the icons, Tony Pulis is the one that probably stood out to me and a lot of these guys are probably before my time. Ricardo Fuller, I remember playing quite a while back in the Premier League. Matthew Edmonton with the same to Jeff Hurst, probably the most famous one here. To Jeff Hurst, Lou Macari, he's got a nice little chip chop somewhere just outside of um, Old Trafford, I believe. I think it's Lou I think it's Lou Macari. Anyway, getting uh, sidetracked. We currently play in the Bet 365 Stadium, which has a capacity of 30,000 seats. It was built in 1997. And the average season ticket price is £500, which isn't too bad for a Premier League team. So what I will do now is just run through the squad quickly. Let's <laughs> let's, let's not look at this. <laughs> so, uh, first team squad, Alvaro Jose, fantastic keeper, who I managed to sign very, very cheap from Manchester City. Great aerial reach, great reflexes, is a Brazilian international. And if I'm being truthful, for a team that got promoted from the championship, I'm actually quite surprised he's come uh, and decided to play for me. I think that's a decent price, and I think we're going for five and a half. Yeah, five and a half million. So keeper is a top top player. Aziz Peyrat, or Peyra, if he's French, I'm going to assume the team might be silent. Managed to get him on loan from Arsenal, who can play across the back three. He's probably a centre back, but I've played him at right back because I've had better centre-backs at the club and I've also played him at left-back actually recently he's moved to left-back again, decent player I hope I can sign him on the free hopefully but it's... we don't know when does his Arsenal contract actually run out? Uh, his Arsenal contract runs out next year so I might be able to get up I might be able to sign him in this summer I might be different, we'll see how it does Nathan Wood, he was already at the club before I arrived and if you look, I'll see how long he's been here for about four seasons now. Ever present, not much to say about him. Decent, on a decent wage, he's not asking for too much and put some great performances. Boban Marinkovic, now he is the best player I have found in a long while. He's a Serbian centre-back, he's a height of 1.9 meters great at tackling great at marking he's strong he's quick he can jump there's, uh, there's you know he's a complete center back and he's only 22 and with his determination I'm hoping to see some of these attributes kick on a bit a gear or two he's been absolutely brilliant he winds up opponents as well so you know could always uh, I would have liked seeing uh, players that have certain character traits because it just makes the game a bit more fun. He's currently on 35,000 but I've tried to tie him down and I think he's signing a contract with someone if memory serves me. Yep, so I've given him a wage increase just to extend the contract. And I'm not sure if it can we have a look at the offer. I don't think we can, but I think it's an extra two years. So his contract will be expiring 2034. I signed him for 3.9 million, that was the other thing. He's, he's one of those players in Football Manager, for those of you who regularly play, will know you sometimes find a gem, you know what the big team's after him, fantastic stats, cheap, and he just turns out to be this world class player. It's going to be a bit of a struggle to keep him, because I do think he's got a release clause for teams in the Champions League, but that's why I went ahead and signed a new contract, well offered a new contract which is agreed to sign, but when I went with that, he he was adamant that that release clause was stuck in, so I thought I'd still try and get him to sign an extra two years and include the release clause. He doesn't mention it here, but it's about 40 million to teams in the Champions League. Callum Doyle, uh, he was at the club before I arrived. Decent player, I think decent Premier League player could do with a bit better but he was he was my left back for the majority of the season before I signed a right back 
and moved Aziz Peira to the left side. He is more of a centre back and I'm probably going to try and keep him. I have noticed he's got a year left and he's been here since 2027. Not much to say about Kyle Doyle. Dan Rhodes, I think he was my most expensive signing in this playthrough and I signed him for the right back position. Technically he could be better but I think mentally for a 24 year old he's top top quality. And for someone who can play on the right, get up and down the wings, he's got great stamina. He, he actually is my captain, I've changed him to be the Stock City captain in this playthrough because I kicked off as the original captain, it's a long story. Um, and I think he's one of my players that I hope can really push this club to the next level. Help us possibly reach Europe, Europa League or in the Champions League. If you look, yeah, 33 million from Chelsea. Originally, I think the board gave me around 35 million. I wonder if it, I'm sure it tells you how much the board gave us. Yeah, around 40 million and then I sold a couple of players here or there. So, I think he's a good sign. Matteo Land Landoit, Dutch centre, well he's a Dutch winger but I've retrained him to be a centre mid. With his passing ability, his work rate, off the ball, I think he's much more suited to, the, to a central mid position than the wing. I mean certainly when the crossing is eight, I mean as a winger you need to have a better crossing than that. Minimum you need to have 14, 15 crossing in the Premier League to have a I signed him for 30 million and it's worth noting a lot of these transfers have been done in installments. So I know I previously sold Dan Rhodes for 30 million. He adds up to 60 and I've only got a budget of 40. I think up front would have been 15, 20 million. It, 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 it wasn't a lot and the pain in the installments. So he's another key player assigned. Acevedo, Acevedo, he was already at the club before I signed and was my captain before I stripped him off a couple of matches ago. It, it was just recent in game. I think it was about a month ago. And he's been here since 2024. Ever again ever present and he's a decent player. De decent player. Tammy Abraham we signed in Jan so three four months ago in game. Seven million. I'm being perfectly honest he's 34 now, 34 years old. I expected better. With the stats I expected to have a better impact. But he, he's getting there. Hopefully he can kick on for us. Dane Scarlett, he was at the club when I joined and I finished top scorer for me in the championship last season with 28 goals and 46 appearances. I think whoever was managing Stoke in this game three, four years ago got him dirt cheap from Tottenham for five and a half minutes. Christoph Christophi. Christophi. My personal signing of the season. Pound, pound for pound signing of the season. And what I mean with that is, I think he came for 2.7 million. This is nothing in today's day and for a Premier League team. So far, he's got 14 goals and 23 Premier League appearances. And in fact, I'm wondering if he's needed the chart that he might all the properties. Okay, okay, maybe not. I thought he'd be somewhere around here, but. Erling Haaland has 31. It's ridiculous. But he probably is joint 7th, maybe? Let's have a little wait until he actually needs it. 9th, 9th. Not too bad for a player who signed for less than 3 million. I didn't realise how many gold Haaland scores. Uh, where were we? Yeah, so that's Christophe. Decent dribbling, finishing first touch. Quick. So far, he's doing the job. Terry Taylor, he was already at the club. I'm not going to spend too much time on him. Ismail Cater, managed to get him on loan from Atletico Madrid for free. He essentially is a cover. He's actually a decent player. If I could sign him, I would. For a decent fee, barely get any room to play. One for the future. Dylan De Costa, I signed after having him on loan at Hanover. So he played about 16 games for me last season. Got him on a free, currently sits in my central mid and it's 
to one of the positions I'm going to try to improve for the summer. Sign another tenant for them. Celto Rocha, I had him on loan at Hanover. And he got 18 gold and I think that was the season we got promoted to the Bundesliga for Hanover. 18 gold and 34 appearances. And I managed to pick him up for 3.2 million. And if you look at his stats, finishing not the best, but I play him as a support, a shadow striker what's in this game. Dribbling, decent dribbling, decent first touch, he's quick, he's quite tall, for 3 million, can't go wrong. Luke Folks, now I found out about him a second or two seasons into the Dulwich game, would have been what, 21, 22, but yeah, two seasons in, in the league, in league two, uh, with Dulwich Hamlet, but obviously I couldn't afford him. In the end, he's had quite a bit of a journey from non-league all the way up to Stoke. Paid for 8 million for him. Decent stats. 25 years old, still young, still has time to develop. Doesn't provide as many goals. But we are pretty much a young team, young Premier League team, in a sense. And it's the first time in the Premier League for a very long while. There's a few positions. I want to improve. Certainly a defensive midfielder, centre mid, possibly a left back and a, another striker. So you know, once we get a complete team, maybe he might improve his performances. But I think he's a good player. Henry Lawrence was here before I arrived, so I'm not going to spend too much time. Boyce Clark was my cover keeper. Aglarov. Galarov, I can even speak. Uh, I signed him from Hanover. I signed him at Hanover actually for 20,000. No, great with his performances for 20,000. I managed to sign him for under 200,000. Decent dribbler, can cross, it's a bit quick. He's okay as like a fourth choice winger. Currently, he can't get into my squad because we don't play with wingers, but who knows? I might even send him on loan next season. Sinovic was here before I arrived. Decent player, he's a winger, still a victim of tactic. I might get ready for the summer. Mbala and Zola, I just signed on the free for three months. I think his contract is an emergency backup. Striker, just in case you have that injury crisis. It's Tian Grondal. Again, I think he's a very, very good winger, but I just can't find any time. I say time, I can't find space for him with the tactics that I play. At least now. I did play a wing 4-3-3 in the championship but the moment we moved up it was a struggle so I went back to my 4-4-2 diamond and I love the tactics in the second that I played at Dulwich that got us promoted for a couple of seasons. Uh, if you ignore the trial list then we've got Jonathan Jones who was at the club before I arrived hopefully I can get rid of him in the summer. I've already got one. Reynold, Reynold already at the club, look to get rid of him in the summer. Thiago, I signed in Jan. Because he's a winger, there was no space in my team. I think I signed him for 3 million, which is probably what pushed me. I didn't need him. Yeah, three and a half million. I think for that price, you have to take a chance. I loaned him to Porto, and he's actually doing really, really well. Five goals and seven league appearances, two assists. And he's had an assistant player of the match in the Continental. I'm pretty sure that's the Champions League against the Arsenal. I think it was this game. Yeah, he had the assist against Arsenal. They don't play well in the return leg, but hey. Decent in the first one. At least they got... Um, they went through. Um, he played against Chelsea. Decent again. Took him off at 56 minutes. Anyway, I'm digressing. Martin Molnar, Serbian defender. Currently on loan at Leg Legia. 19 year old, great tackling, marking for a 19 year old. Not the best heading, but with his height, I'm not too worried about that. He is one for the future. Decent determination. He's quite brave. Hopefully, the strength improves. This is probably the biggest attribute that I want to see an improvement on. Still a teenager, so a long way to go. I've got for £600,000. One for the future. And I think that is the squad for Stock City. I'm just going to take a look at the I think we've got a couple of players coming in. Vincenzo Corti, 
I have time for 20 million. Uh, it was his release clause, and I, I remember thinking I needed a tenth of it in the summer, so hopefully he can copyright it and take up one of the positions that I need. I think it's a very, very good player for a 23 year old. His passing is good, his first touch is good, great technique, great vision, especially when I want to play him as that big blind playmaker. So he's interesting. He'll be an interesting signing for us, hopefully, in the future. That's his so, that's where we are with Stoke. Where are we in the league? We currently sit 13th. 39 points after 33 games. And I am quite happy if I'm honest. Coming up from the championship, the first thing you want is not to get relegated. And it doesn't matter. I've got a decent base team, and like I said, I want to sign at least maybe two or three players in the summer. So it really pushes us to challenge for at least 6th to 7th next season, at the very least. We've scored 65 goals, but we, no sorry, yeah we've scored 65 goals, we conceded 43, I think our defence needs improving. No, that's completely wrong. We, <laughs> we scored 43 goals and then conceded 65. But if you look at that from the last, from the bottom, 17th onwards, You've conceded more goals. In fact, only three teams have conceded more than us, and all the teams that are in the relegation. So I think that tells you where we are as a team. We're decent in attack. Defense not so good, but we're working. Just going to take a look at the tactics. Those of you who are interested in where this tactic came from, if you look back at the old videos on YouTube or who are following me from the streams on Twitch, you'll know I played this 4-4-2 diamond and it worked and so I sort of reverted back to it because I think I didn't have the wingers at the start of the season, they were all right wingers and we went on a good run and I just kept it ever since. So we really sort of play a possession based game in the middle with two strikers. So I might change that and go back to 4-3-3 next season. I haven't decided just yet. Never actually seen this one, so what does this mean? Oh, it's injured, it's injured, isn't it? Oh, it needs a rest. Does that mean I'm going to go crazy? Sorry, sometimes I see new icons, um, but don't worry too much about that right now. So yeah, all in all, I think we're doing really well with Stoke. In fact, I think we're doing very good with Stoke. Better than really well. One thing I will say is, let's just take a quick look at the past record. So, the last, what's that, 10, 10 seasons, Man City have won 5. When you look at their team, they've got, I mean, these are the regions that they've signed, but I'm looking at the Brian Graven Birch, who's supposed to be an up and coming player in real life. And where am I looking at? Finding. And Phil Folden, Erling Haaland, they're back for a while, and <laughs> Kylian Mbappe. So, I'm going to give you an overview of the play. Yeah, so when you got Haaland, Foden, and Mbappe, it, 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 it's a big, big long ask. I'm just going to check Haaland's stats since the game. So he constantly hits in 20 goals a season. Which you, you, you can't really compete with that unless you sign someone just as good. I'm going to check Mbappe's record. After the wing, I need another one. Averaging roughly. Well, he's not as good as the season, but he makes up with it more in his assists. Maybe not this season, but certainly the previous two seasons. As a winger, anyway, putting in those sorts of. I think he used to be a... I think he's a real life player as well. I'm sure I've signed him in the previous football manager goal. But to be fair, they've only signed him in the last five seasons. But yeah, it's, it's very difficult to compete unless I. Bump up this uh, table, sign my players young from like of Colombia, Brazil, Serbia, find find more players like Marinkovic and really sort of challenge for them. Um, I think that's all I wanted to show for now. Just going to check if there's anything else that I've sort of missed out. I don't think so. If you want to take a look at the finances, have a rough balance of 40 million. And I think once the money comes in at the end of the season, we expect it to make an overall loss of 5 million but I think that would be offset with players that I might sell and things like that so I'm not 
too worried about that. If I'm being completely honest. Wage budget of 1.2 mil a week. There's not a lot to say, but if you look at Man City and Manchester United and even Chelsea, they've got wage budgets of five, six million a week. But for what we for what we are as a club, I think we are doing very, very well. And I really hope next season we can push this up to a Europa League spot position. Oh, actually, one last thing I did want to mention. I'm pretty sure England won the World Cup. Unless I... Imagined it. No, I imagined it. It was the runners up position. Brazil in the final, 3-2. And the next World Cup is in the couple of years, so it's European this, this season. Uh, the European Championship, sorry. This season, let's look at the last World Cup. Germany, France won it again, then Brazil. I feel like something's missing, I know it's every four years. No, it's just me. I think I've played the game longer to have more than three World Cups, but yeah. England are runners up at least. And one thing I do want to do is for at least the next World Cup, if I can get a hold of the National League job just to take them to the World Cup, I might push for that. Whichever team it may be. But we'll see what happens in a couple of seasons then. I think this time next year will probably be the right time to apply for those sorts of jobs. You know what, with that, I think that's a good place to start. I don't want to give you too much information. What I will do now is apologise again for the irregular upload schedule. But I am back and I will be uploading at least two to three videos a week, hopefully, <laughs> he says. Or if not that, I at least will be streaming on my Twitch channel at Yocto Gamer. That's Y O C T O G A M E R. If you don't want to watch my streams, I just want to watch a condensed overview of where I am in the in the go in the save game. You can catch that on my YouTube channel at Yocto Gaming. That's Y O C T O G A M I N G. What I will say is that previously I used to make sort of review uh, review videos after each save. What I'm more likely to do with my YouTube videos are to sort of make two or three videos as in-game season so after every maybe four months i'll stop do a review period and then we can sort of look ahead a bit and where we want to go and where we are i think that'll be a bit better rather than making every time i play the game but nevertheless i'm back yakto gaming is back and i hope to see you guys i say see you guys i hope you guys <laughs> come and watch me stay for the ride have fun and watch me, I wouldn't say fail, but we, we're, we're big bottle jobs, I'm a big bottle job in this game. If you've been following, following me, you'll know some of the times where we should have got promoted but didn't. But yeah, with that, I will sign off and I hope to see you next time.